Do ya? While it's true that some of the earliest superhero movies appeared in the 1920s, this genre truly reached its apex in the 90s, especially after Superman and Batman became extremely popular. Still, they're not the only superheroes who ruled the hearts of fans. There were many imitators and original creators too, whose superheroes became cult classics regardless of what the critics were saying. In this video, we'll be exploring the amazing, underrated, and must-watch superhero movies of the 90s that will definitely lengthen your watch list. So get your gear ready and explore some dark, brooding, and occasionally funny films. Before we get into the list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990. Four green vigilantes with shells on their backs and masks on their faces? Yup. That's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, four teenage brothers who learn the art of ninjutsu from a rat called Master Splinter, and they live in the most unexpected place, the sewers of New York City. Splinter has raised them, and he named them Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael, after his favorite Renaissance painters. Raphael once saved a TV reporter named April O'Neil from the Foot Clan, a group of criminal ninjas who were after her because she had unraveled their crimes, and their master Shredder wanted her to be silenced. She had also fallen unconscious during this fight, so Raphael had taken her to his lair, but one of the foot soldiers also secretly followed them. Once April recovered, the Ninja Turtles dropped her off safely at home, but they unknowingly sacrificed their master's safety and he was kidnapped while they were gone. Now, it was up to the Ninja Turtles to fight the Foot Clan, defeat the Shredder, and save their master from his clutches. You should definitely watch this movie if you haven't because its humor and outlandish action scenes are worth the watch. Dark Man, 1990. Whatever he was and whatever he had was destroyed when some gangsters ruined his laboratory. So, he became the new face of justice and the enemy of crime. He was Dr. Peyton Westlake, who was researching a type of synthetic skin that would help burn victims. But his research had a flaw that made it rapidly disintegrate in light. He also had a girlfriend named Julie, who was an attorney and had found some incriminating documents that the city's crime boss, Robert Durant, wanted. So, Durant attacked Westlake's lab with his mobsters and demanded the papers, but Westlake knew nothing about it. The mobsters then severely burned him in acid, flung him into the river, and then exploded his laboratory, ruining everything he had. He was soon hospitalized, and during the treatment, he became immune to pain and also lost his mental stability. Looking much like the Invisible Man with his face covered in bandages, Westlake escaped the hospital and set up a lab in a building where he created a mask of his face. Driven by revenge and a passion to reclaim his former love, he then became the Dark Man and impersonated others with his skills to hunt down these criminals. You should give this movie a try if you like horror comedy and dark superhero, and it also has sequels which will be discussed later in the video. Captain America, 1990. Years before Chris Evans became the face of Captain America, the role was played by Matt Salinger in this film. It shows Steve Rogers' superhero origin story and takes quite some liberty with the comic storyline. Let's take a quick look at it. Steve Rogers was a thin man who had survived polio, and he once volunteered to be injected with the super soldier formula under the American government to become super strong. He was then codenamed Captain America and sent on a mission to subdue an equally powerful opponent, the Red Skull who was planning to blast the White House with a missile. Even though he successfully infiltrated Red Skull's location, the latter ended up tying him to the missile and blasting him off. Even still, he didn't sway from his mission and managed to kick the missile off course to crash in Alaska, burying him in the ice. Luckily, his body was recovered decades later and revived to once again fight the Red Skull and his crime family, who were once again targeting the President of the United States. The Death of the Incredible Hulk, 1990. Is he a monster who kills people, or only a mutant human? All David Banner knows for sure is that the Hulk is a mutant thing that appears during moments of anger or fear, and that it's a part of him. The Hulk may be incredible, but for Banner, he's only an incredible nightmare whom he wants destroyed so he can be human again. So, he breaks into the laboratory of Dr. Ronald Pratt in the hopes of curing himself with his formula. Pratt was then conducting research on humans' healing capacity and demanded to study the creature first before he could cure him. But his spy network wanted to use his research for terrorism, and they kidnapped him before the research could reach any conclusion. Banner went on to search for Pratt, 
and found the convicts escaping on a plane, so he boarded it as Hulk. Unfortunately, the plane exploded during the struggle because of a misfired bullet, and he crashed onto the ground, where he took his last breath and finally felt himself free from his mutant form. Robocop 2 1990 In this sequel to the critically acclaimed 80s blockbuster Robocop, Detroit is on the verge of bankruptcy and will soon default on its debt to Omni Consumer Products, or OCP, an organization that is planning to take over the government. To make things worse, OCP has triggered a police strike and a new drug called Nuke has been plaguing the city, alongside the introduction of a new Robocop model set to use immoral death row inmates in place of police officers. Robocop Alex Murphy must maintain law and order in this dystopian city and save innocents by tackling this menace and defeating the second Robocop. With its gore violence paired with humor and satire and heightened with amazing special effects, this is one of the best sci-fi sequel films and an interesting watch. Dick Tracy 1990. Super strength and magical powers aren't the only things that make you a hero, because heroes come in all shapes and sizes, and this also includes detectives. Dick Tracy is one such legendary, hard-boiled detective with an unparalleled intellect and crime-solving skills. He's also among the world's most popular detectives and stands steadfast as a symbol of law. In this award-winning film, he befriends a street urchin named Kid, who then becomes his inseparable partner during his quest to search for solid evidence against the crime lord Alphonse Caprice. The film is remarkable for its style, color, and noir theme, and watching it will fill you up with nostalgia and enjoyment. The Giver, 1991. He's half human and half alien, but one thing's for sure, he's fully a hero. The Giver is an interesting and eerie story of a young man, Sean Barker, who finds an artifact left behind by aliens ages ago. This artifact was called the Unit. It was a bio-boosted armor that acted as a normal shield for aliens, but if a human wore it, he would gain a hundred times his natural power and become the Giver. On the other side, this unit was being searched for by the Kronos Corporation, which was actually run by the alien Zoalord to further develop this technology for world domination. Now, mysterious aliens are chasing Sean to regain the unit, but our superhero wouldn't let this type of disaster happen. Despite all these years, Giver remains a fun and enjoyable movie that shouldn't be missed. <laughs> Nineteen ninety one. Before we head into the details of the film, we first need to know who Darna is. She's an alien warrior from the planet Marte who manifests on Earth in a girl named Narda in the most unbelievable way. This girl happened to swallow a white stone that had crashed on Earth as a shooting star. So let's talk about the story. In the film, an evil immortal named Dominico is operating in the Philippines and is given special powers to a fashion designer named Valentina and a local admirer to recruit them to his team. He also wanted to recruit Darna for his evil plans, but of course she was against it, so he began using more sinister methods. Now Darna must fight them with all her superhero might and put an end to their evil plan of mass destruction. Now, next up we have... <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze 1991 with the success of the first TMNT film, our heroes returned with a sequel in 1991, and the Shredder also made a comeback to take revenge. The film picks up from the events of the first, and the Turtles are seen living with the reporter, April, while their master Splinter insists upon remaining hidden in the shadows. She once interviewed Professor Jordan Perry of the TGRI company about a toxic waste leak, and he assured her of safety, but later, Master Splinter revealed that the ooze that mutated them was also created by the TGRI. The Foot Clan also had their eyes on this chemical, so they kidnapped Perry and forced him to use this ooze on a snapping turtle and a wolf, which gave rise to two new villains, Taka and Razar. Our heroes have to now return these villains to their original form while at the same time fighting against the Shredder, who is of course back in action. This movie is a solid follow-up that retains the goofiness of the original, even though it's not quite as good, although you'll probably have a pretty radical time watching it. It's the Rocketeer! The Rocketeer! 1991. What would you have done if you were living in the 1930s and accidentally found a jetpack? Perhaps this movie will help you think about your choice. The film follows the story of Cliff Secord, a stunt pilot in the 1930s who happens to find a rocket pack, and as you might have guessed, he straps it on, wears a flashy helmet, and becomes a flying hero called the Rocketeer. But 
The real owner wasn't just sitting quietly, he was searching for his lost invention, and the Rocketeer's heroic actions helped him find it. Can you guess who else had their eyes on the rocket pack besides him? It was the Nazis, of course, and they wanted to use it as a weapon. The FBI, the gangster, and the German spies are behind him now, and his girlfriend is also getting dragged into the mix. It's up to the Rocketeer to stop the Nazis, rescue his girlfriend, and save the day. This movie's a lot of fun, we absolutely recommend it, it has a very nostalgic feel, and I mean, The Rocketeer is just a blast. Batman Returns 1992 The sewers of New York City were the home of our ninja heroes, but the sewers of Gotham City house a villain, and the creature of the night has returned to save the city from him. The main villain of this movie is a man named Oswald, whose parents discarded him into the sewers at birth. Now, it might come off as a surprise, but he was then adopted by a family of penguins. The movie takes place 30 years after that, and Oswald Cobblepot has now taken on the identity of the penguin to seek respect among Gotham's elites by any means. So, he kidnaps a business tycoon named Max Shrek and uses his influence in his favor. On the other hand, another villain named Catwoman is born in the spirit of revenge, and she joins hands with the Penguin to disgrace Batman. Now it's up to our hero to do everything in his power to stop these villains from causing chaos in Gotham City. Batman Returns is the second Tim Burton Batman movie, and it's an amazing film with dark themes, striking visuals, and memorable characters which makes it a classic must-watch film of this genre, and not just because of the Michelle Pfeiffer catsuit. Meow. But I can cast a spell. Dr. Mordred, 1992. If you love Doctor Strange, then you should totally watch this movie at least once. In it, an evil wizard named Cabal is searching for the Philosopher's Stone and other elements of alchemy to complete his spell for opening the gates of hell and unleashing minions on Earth from this fourth dimension. But where there's evil, there's someone good to counter it. And in this film, it's the wizard Anton Mordred who was sent to Earth to stop him. He's been looking for his nemesis for 150 years and has currently taken on the identity of a criminal psychologist to keep his sorcery a secret. During the events of the film, Dr. Mordred notices that a series of thefts are related to the alchemy elements that Cabal is after, so he begins playing his moves. The final showdown happens in a cosmopolitan museum where Cabal animates huge Tyrannosaurus skeletons with his magic to distract the officers and then begins his process to open the gates of hell, but Mordred is not going to let himself be overpowered with such tricks. He also animated a nearby American Mastodon to deal with the dinosaurs, while he himself engaged in a fight with Cabal. And as you can easily guess, Mordred wins this battle before returning back to his magic dimension. The next film on our list is... No loitering. Robocop 3 1993. Detroit City is once again in danger, but fear not because Robocop is back to lay down the law. By the time of this film's events, the OCP has managed to take control of the city via bankruptcy, and now they plan to build the new Delta City over its remains. But before that, they need the city to be evacuated, and for this, they've created a heavily armed private security force called the Rehab. It is now forcibly evicting citizens while Robocop is saving them from this injustice. He has also become more independent, more sentient, and more human than before, and has vowed to save the civilians and destroy the OCP to avenge the death of his partner, Anne Lewis, who died for the same cause. It doesn't capture the magic of the original, but it's still an interesting and nostalgic watch. The Meteor Man, 1993. How would you feel if your teacher began teaching some lessons to the hardened criminals of your city? That'd be pretty interesting, right? We see something similar happen in this movie, starring a school teacher named Jefferson Reed who lives in a neighborhood in Washington, D.C., terrorized by the Golden Lord's gang and a drug lord named Anthony Byers. He once tried to rescue a woman from this gang, but soon had to run for his life and hid himself in a garbage dumpster. Suddenly, a green meteorite crashed from the sky and broke his spine, but luckily he was completely healed of his injuries after a few days of treatment in the hospital. Jeff later discovered that the meteorite had actually given him amazing powers like flight, laser vision, telepathy, and healing. So, he took on the identity of the Meteor Man and dealt with the Golden Lord's gang and Anthony Byers, making his neighborhood a much safer place. It's one of the earliest superhero films to have an African American as the lead. It's also funny and goofy, and you'll surely enjoy watching it. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, 1993. Everyone's favorite Heroes in a Half Shell return once again for a third film in three years for yet another Kawabunga adventure. And in this film, they end up traveling back in time to feudal Japan. But 
How did that happen? You see, April had brought gifts for the turtles, and among them was an ancient Japanese scepter that lit up and sent April back in time, while an ancient prince named Kenshin took her place in the present. He revealed that he was the one who initiated this time swap, and then explained everything to them. After which the turtles traveled back in time to save April from the evil lord Norinaga who had captured her, while four honor guards take their place in the present. The characters are as lovable as ever, and despite the budget being slashed and the quality dropping through the floor, the movie is underrated and fun to watch. Many more such entertaining movies are coming up, so keep watching. The Heroic Trio, 1993 You've surely heard of The Invisible Man, but The Invisible Woman is a little less famous. No, we're not talking about the wife of Reed Richards. This character exists in the Heroic Trio universe, a little bit less famous than the MCU, and in it, she's seen kidnapping newborn babies for her evil master, who is planning to raise these babies and turn them into unbeatable warriors. The Invisible Woman might be involved in some evil deeds, but on the contrary, her sister is a secret hero who fights crime as Wonder Woman, and this hero intends to bring back her sister to the path of goodness. So, she approaches her with a friend, the Thief Catcher, and together they convince her to join with them and defeat the evil master as a heroic trio, and commit a decent amount of copyright infringement along the way. This is yet another grotesque but funny and charming film that'll give you an unforgettable viewing experience. The Fantastic Four, 1994. Most of us are familiar with the Fantastic Four's on-screen debut in 2005 with a film of the same title, but this film was made in the 90s, and it's an unreleased version that was specifically made to retain copyrights. It's extremely low budget, but if you wish to watch the movie, it's available on YouTube, and it's honestly pretty hilarious. The film shows us the origin story of our heroes. Reed, Susan, Johnny, and Ben were part of an experiment and sent to outer space. But there, they were exposed to some cosmic rays and then crash-landed on Earth. They soon discovered that the radiation had ended up giving them special powers of elasticity, fire generation, invisibility, and rock-like toughness. However, Reed's old college friend, who was supposedly dead, had returned as the villainous Doctor Doom and kidnapped them. Now, they must fight him with their newly gained powers in this cheesy, never-released film. The Crow 1994. Crows are seen as God's messenger in the mortal realm and are often associated with bad luck, but in this film, a crow became a great blessing to our lead, Eric Draven, when it resurrected him to seek revenge on the crime boss who had murdered him and his fiance for seizing their apartment building. Eric was now more or less an invincible being because any injury that he sustained was healed immediately. He then painted his face black and white and set out on his journey of revenge while the crow became his guide. Fans of gothic horror and dark superheroes should definitely put this film on their watch list. The Shadow, 1994. This movie is the right fit for those who are searching for some brooding adventure beyond imagination. It follows the story of a wealthy man who secretly terrorizes the underworld of crime with his alt identity of the Shadow, and those whom he saves often end up working for him as his agents. But his true identity is a total secret, even hidden from his uncle, who is the police commissioner of the city. In this film, he had to fight a man named Shiwan Khan, who is the last descendant of the dangerous Genghis Khan. He's planning to finish the incomplete work of his ancestor, that is, conquering the world, and he intends to achieve this with the use of an atomic bomb. Now, the responsibility is on the shoulders of our hero to stop this dangerous man and save the world. This is also one of those underrated yet amazing films from the 90s, and you should surely give it a watch especially if you love stylized films with noir themes. Darna, The Return, 1994 This time, our superhero is amidst a serious problem because she's lost her magic pearl as well as all her superheroic powers along with it. And at the same time, her arch enemy Valentina has also returned and she is now sending subliminal messages on religious TV programs as part of her evil plan to take over the Philippines. Now Narda must find her magical stone quickly and stop Valentina in this exciting sequel. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Blank Man, 1994. Get ready to rumble because here comes another goofy superhero, the Blank Man. In this movie, we have a nerdy repairman who's a genius but 
gullible too, and his name is Daryl Walker. He used to live with his grandmother, keeping himself cut off from the realities of his corrupt neighborhood. But when a mobster gang kills his grandma, he becomes aware of the evil people around him, inspiring him to become the vigilante superhero called the Blank Man. And he even invented his own gadgets and weapons to save the people around him. His good deeds soon built up a reputation, and he also inspired other people in the town to become real-life heroes. His slapstick superhero adventures were really funny in the movie, so if you're looking for some good old-fashioned entertainment, Blank Man might just scratch the itch. Bionic Ever After 1994. What do you think? What's the worst thing that could happen to disrupt your wedding plans? It certainly wouldn't be a deadly computer virus or a terrorist threat, but for this couple, that's exactly what happened. This movie follows the wedding plans of Steve Austin, a cyborg working for a secret organization called the OSI, and Jamie Sommer, a bionic woman with prosthetics. But their happily ever after was called off when Jamie's bionic limbs started to break down because of a computer virus. Unfortunately, the groom was also stricken with the same virus during his mission to stop a terrorist, and things become even worse when the terrorist captures him too along with the other hostages. The terrorist situation had become pretty dire, but surprisingly, Jamie had cured herself while the groom was busy on his mission, and then she shows up at the location to rescue him and the other hostages. This bionic couple then took good care of the terrorist, and sometime later, they become married and start a new chapter in their life. Some of the most interesting superhero movies from the 90s are listed next, and you don't want to miss them, so keep watching. Do you? Huh? The Mask, 1994. How interesting your boring life can become when you have the power and the freedom to transform into an utterly goofy cartoon character. The story of Stanley Ipkiss can give you a great picture of how amazing that might be. He was an ordinary man who was often mocked by others, but once he found a mysterious wooden mask, wearing it turned him into a green-faced troublemaker. He does crazy things under its influence and even ends up robbing a bank. But guess who gets the blame instead? a junior crime lord and his goons. The crime lord sends his men after Ipkiss, which leads to a series of really entertaining events, including a dance number. The Mask emerges as a maniacal superhero in this film, and anybody who loves crazy comedy combined with action should definitely put this film on their watch list. Batman Forever, 1995. Batman is back on the big screen, and this time he brought a partner to help him fight crime. In this movie, our hero has to fight the villainous Two-Face who blames Batman for ruining his life because he failed to save him on time. Batman also ends up creating a new enemy called the Riddler when he refuses to approve Edward Nigma's inventions because they could possibly be used to manipulate people. In the pursuit of revenge, Two-Face hijacks an event that Batman was attending in his civil identity of Bruce Wayne and he threatened to detonate a bomb. But there was a boy named Richard Grayson who managed to throw this bomb and save everyone. But unfortunately, his parents died in the process. Bruce took this boy home as his, stick with us here, his ward, where Richard learns about his superhero identity as the Batman and requests to become his sidekick and avenge his parents. So, Batman gains a superhero partner named Robin, and these two act together to rid Gotham City of the double trouble of the Riddler and Two-Face. My face! Darkman 2 The Return of Durant 1995 Our scientist turned superhero has returned because so has his nemesis. By the time of the events of this movie, Darkman had begun secretly helping the police to capture criminals and using their money to fund his research on synthetic skin. Meanwhile, Durant, who has been in a coma until now, has awoken and taken back control of his criminal business. He also frees a prisoner named Alfred Hathaway to help him make a high-tech weapon, which he would use to take over the city's drug trade. When the Dark Man saw that his friend had been killed and his body was missing a finger, he instantly realized that Durant had returned. So he once again pulled out his synthetic skin masks to infiltrate his lair and start a battle. Durant then tried to escape the scene, but Dark Man was already thinking ahead and had attached an explosive to his car that killed him. Having dealt with his enemy, he returns back to his research and continues his vow of fighting for justice. Let me guess. Life. Ah! Judge Dredd, 1995. If you wanted a movie that was similar to Robocop, but with its own unique feel and story, then your search should end with Judge Dredd. This movie is also set in a dystopian city, but here, judges serve as the justice system in the roles of police officer, judge, jury, and executioner. One of these judges is Joseph Dredd, who is the most dedicated to his work, 
but things go downhill for him when he's falsely accused of murder and given a death sentence. Luckily, his punishment was reduced to imprisonment with the intrusion of his mentor, Chief Justice Fargo. However, Fargo was forced to vacate his position for this, and it became occupied by the real culprit, Judge Griffin, who had freed a former judge, Rico, to frame Dredd for the murder. But of course, they didn't know it then. Later, when Dredd was being taken to prison, he managed to escape during a bandit attack and got the chance to meet Fargo, who was now aware of the truth and shared it with him. Afterwards, Judge Dredd sneaks back into the city to team up with his friend and bring true justice back to the streets. This next film is especially nostalgic for many of us. It's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie. 1995. When talking about the superheroes of the 90s, the Power Rangers are surely not far behind. In this film, the Power Rangers mentor Zordon tells them about an intergalactic tyrant, Ivan Ooze, whom he trapped in an egg thousands of years ago. But now, Ivan Ooze was roaming free and ready to take revenge. So, he sends the Power Rangers to stop Ivan, but their powers vanish while fighting his minions' army, and Ivan manages to destroy their command center. With Zordon rapidly dying, the Rangers have to transport themselves to the planet Phaedos to find a power great enough to defeat Ivan and save their mentor. The film is fun, thrilling, and will take you right back to your childhood. What's the matter with you? Finish him! Tank Girl, 1995. Not all heroes are calm and collected. Some are impulsive too, just like Tank Girl, a punk anti-hero who lives in a tank. This film is set in 2033 when a global drought has made the world a wasteland, and the remaining water resources are being controlled by the Water and Power Corporation. But there's still one resource left, and this water well is owned by Tank Girl. Now, she must fight against tyranny and save a young girl named Sam whom the corporation has abducted. It's a fantastic cult classic film that's often underrated, but a lot of fun to watch nevertheless. Barbed Wire, 1996. Barbara Kopetsky is a bar owner in the town of Steel Harbor, but it's only a side business for her because her real business is that of a bounty hunter. And in this business, she goes by the name Barb Wire. This film is set in 2017 when the Second American Civil War is going on. And to end this war, a certain Dr. Devonshire is being searched for because she holds the information about a bioweapon but she intends to escape to Canada and make this information public. Barbed Wire also gets tangled in this government plot and crisis when she is approached by her ex-lover, Axel Hood, to help him and his current lover, Dr. Devonshire, escape to Canada. <laughs> Dark Man 3. Die, Dark Man, Die. 1996. Clearly, TMNT wasn't the only franchise with three superhero films in one decade, because Darkman is back yet again with some thrilling and intense action. This time, he stopped a crime boss named Peter Rooker and used his money in his research. With the help of Dr. Thorne, who had saved his life earlier, he manages to create a small amount of permanent liquid skin. But then, to his surprise, she reveals that she is actually Rooker's mistress. He was then captured and experimented on by Rooker to create a super strength formula. Now, Darkman has to stop this super powered enemy to foil his plans and save the city from ruin. It's a step down from the first movie, but Darkman 3 is definitely worth a watch. The Crow. City of Angels, 1996. The Crow returns in this second installment, and this time, it's revived a mechanic named Ash Corvin, who was brutally murdered with his eight-year-old son Danny by the drug lord Judah Earl, because they had happened to witness his thugs murder another drug dealer. After his resurrection, he meets Sarah, who had been friends with our last hero, Eric Draven, and so she knows a great deal about the Crow's legend. She shares her knowledge with Ash to help him in his revenge journey, after which he dresses up in black, applies facial paint and hops on a performance motorcycle to start killing his murderer and his henchmen one by one. Black Mask, 1996. For those who enjoy the super soldier trope, here's another movie to add to your list. This movie follows the story of Choi Chick, a former test subject of a super soldier project that was disbanded when one of these super soldiers killed a team of policemen in a rage outburst. The government had to order the extermination of all these soldiers, and he had to flee with his fellow comrades before going separate paths. He began a peaceful and quiet life in Hong Kong as a librarian, but things began to stir up when he witnessed his comrades going on a crime spree so violent 
that the police couldn't handle it. This is when Choi Chik puts on a mask and a hat and becomes the superhero Black Mask to get rid of these criminals in this exciting film. The Phantom. 1996. If you're looking for a fun and good old-fashioned movie with a superhero wearing a purple spandex suit and a mask, then The Phantom might be the right fit. He comes from a line of African superheroes who derive their powers from a skull ring that is passed on from father to son, and our hero, Kit Walker, is the 21st Phantom in this succession. In this film, a power-hungry madman named Xander Drax is searching for three skulls made of gold, silver, and jade. Together, they're the skulls of the Tuganda that form a weapon of doom, and the Phantom must find them before Drax lays his evil hands upon them. Generation X 1996. Here we have teenage superheroes in a spin-off of the X-Men franchise. They're a group of youngsters with mutant powers who are recruited into Xavier's school for gifted youngsters to help them gain control of their powers and become the next generation of superheroes. Besides this, our young heroes were also taught how to cope in a world that hates their mutant powers. And as a precaution, they're told not to leave the school grounds. But trouble reached them when a mad scientist called Russell Tresh began haunting their dreams with his power. His ultimate goal was to build a dream machine using a material extracted from the brains of the mutants. Our heroes have to stop him before anything grave happens in this cheesy but fun movie. I am John Jones. Leader of the Justice League. Justice League of America, 1997. All the superheroes around the world forming an organization to fight crime? Well, that's been happening for quite some time, and this time, the Justice League needs to save the city from a weatherman. Of course, an evil weatherman who's controlling the weather to terrorize the city for ransom. Meanwhile, a meteorologist named Tori Olaf's daughter has accidentally gained the super ability to form ice. She was soon suspected of being the weatherman by the Justice League and brought in for interrogation, but they released her afterwards. Later, she discovers that the real weatherman is her boss, Dr. Eno. So she goes to the Justice League to relay this important information, because of which our heroes are able to stop the weatherman with the help of her powers. And then, she's also in inducted into the Justice League as the superhero Ice. Spawn 1997 film Spawn is another must-watch film from the 90s with a disturbing, dark, and gritty aesthetic. In this film, the US Marine Al Simmons was betrayed by his superior Jason Wynn and then assassinated, after which he ended up in hell. There, he sealed a deal with a demonic ruler to let him respawn on Earth in exchange for becoming his eternal servant. With this deal of dark powers, he turns into a hell spawn and returns to Earth. He was eager to see his wife once again, but he didn't know that five years had passed and she had already moved on and remarried. Meanwhile, his killer, Wynn, has become a high-class weapons dealer. Spawn learns that his old enemy is still after his wife and her new family, so he sets out to defeat him and save her, after which he dedicates himself to bringing justice to the world. Next film on the list is Steel, 1997. Okay, okay, we know it's a superhero movie about Shaq, but it's gotta be pretty devastating to witness your partner being gravely injured because of your invention. John Henry Irons had to suffer through something similar when one of the high-tech weapons that he had invented for the military was shot by a soldier named Nathaniel Burke, and it ended up destroying a building whose debris crushed his partner, Susan Sparks, leaving her reliant on a wheelchair. Irons resigns from his position in disgust, Meanwhile, Nathaniel began to sell his weapons to criminals. However, when Irons witnesses a bank robbery committed with his invention, he rejoined with Sparks and forges a suit of armor along with weapons to become the vigilante Steel and wage a war on crime. Hey, freeze. The heat is on. Batman and Robin, 1997. How far are you willing to go for love? Because Mr. Freeze was ready to freeze all of Gotham City. He's a supervillain who's obsessed with curing his wife Nora, and in this film, he decides to freeze Gotham City until he receives the money he needs to finish finding a cure for her. Meanwhile, another villain named Poison Ivy has also appeared in the city with her bodyguard, Bane, 
and she's joined hands with Mr. Freeze for her own goals. Can you guess her killer move and evil goal? She's a half-human, half-plant monster seeking ways to turn humans into mutant plants, and she can kill her opponents with just one kiss. Our superhero duo must fight these two villains and foil their evil plans, and moreover, they're joined by a third superhero, Batgirl, to help save the city. Unfortunately, this is probably the worst version of Bane, Poison Ivy, and Mr. Freeze that you're gonna see, unless you really, really like Arnold Schwarzenegger and ice puns. Later, flame face. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. 1997. The Power Rangers make a return in this second film with Turbo Power, Turbo Zords, and a secret weapon. In the film, the villain Divatox wants to awaken a demon named Malagor and marry him to rule the universe together. And for this, she needs a golden key to the interdimensional gateway. This key was kept by a wizard named Laragot who escaped to Earth. So Divatox follows him and she is mad. Meanwhile, Rocky DeSantos has been hospitalized due to a bad injury and a shelter kid named Justin Stewart was visiting him, but he hid under the bed when the others showed up. They were then summoned to the power chamber, so Justin accidentally found out they were the Power Rangers. Can you guess what happened next? Justin received Rocky's Blue Ranger powers. So, Justin became the new Blue Ranger, and he went to join the other Rangers and defeat their enemies, Divatox and Malagor. Just a few films left now, and the next up on the list is... Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. 1998. Before Sam Jackson took over the role in the MCU, David Hasselhoff played Nick Fury in this cheesy 90s action spy film. Nick Fury had retired from duty and was living in an abandoned mine shaft when he was forced to once again return to action after the death of his friend Clay Quartermain was reported to him. But how did this happen? Well, the terrorists of Hydra had invaded a S.H.I.E.L.D. facility and one of them, named Viper, killed Clay and even left behind the evidence in a recording in which she mocked Nick Fury. When Fury returned as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, he was shown this recording, and he deduced that the body of his old enemy, Von Strucker, was being used to create the Death's Head virus for Hitler's doomsday weapon. Well, his children were now leading Hydra and threatening to destroy America with the virus. Now it's up to our hard-boiled hero to deal with the mess and save the day. Blade, 1998 film. Vampires have existed on Earth for thousands of years, blending in with humans. But there's someone who will put an end to this bloodthirsty race. He's half human, half vampire, and full badass, and he goes by the name Blade. Blade's mother was bitten by a vampire when she was in labor, because of which he was born with all the powers of vampires and luckily, none of their weaknesses. Now, 30 years later, he's waging a secret war against these vampires with special weapons. Even today, this movie still holds up as iconic, despite a little bit of bad CGI. This was absolutely Marvel's best movie at the time. Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, 1998. If you plan to watch the previous Batman movies, then here's one more to add to your list. In this animated feature, Mr. Freeze has returned once again, seeking the cure for his wife Nora's illness. For this, he approached Dr. Belson in Gotham City and was told that Nora needed an organ transplant, but unfortunately, there were no suitable donors for her except Batgirl. So, he kidnaps Batgirl and convinces her to stay by saying they only needed her for a blood transfusion for Nora. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin investigate this kidnapping to save her from the corrupt plan. What will happen to Batgirl and Nora? Will Batman save the day? We'll save you from spoilers because this movie is thrilling, exciting, and, despite being animated, might be one of the best Batman movies of the decade. Yeah. Mystery Men, 1999. Superheroes are our saviors, but even our saviors need to be rescued sometimes. The Champion City superhero, Captain Amazing, also needed such rescue when he got captured by his nemesis, Casanova Frankenstein. So, a team of amateur heroes sets out to save him, but they accidentally end up killing him in the process. There was no time to stop, though, because Casanova was still on the loose, and he needed to be stopped. So our amateur heroes engaged in a fight with him and ended him forever. They gained the love and praise of the city's reporters, who dubbed them as The Mystery Man. This movie is extremely silly, it's mostly a satire, and it has some great jokes. We highly recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it before. If I don't... 
Alien Arsenal, 1999. Have you ever daydreamed about finding weapons in your school storage unit and then saving all the students from evil? Well, that daydream became a reality for Ralph and Baxter because these high school nerds happened to find a secret chamber that hid high-tech weapons and armor, and they did the very thing you'd expect from a teenager in such a scene. They took these weapons to become teen superheroes and deal with the school bullies. But soon, the aliens whom these weapons belong to appeared on Earth to take them back, and they even used the school bullies as their pawns. However, regaining the weapons was not their sole aim. They had more sinister plans of wiping out the entire human race from Earth, and now it was up to these teen superheroes to prevent that and save the planet. Marvelous Verdict Although the superhero genre was already becoming saturated with Marvel and DC movies in that era, other creators have skillfully given rise to some memorable characters like The Mask, Rocketeer, Robocop, and more. All of these movies are interesting in their own unique way, but there's some things that keep them tied together. Thrilling heroics and villainous villains, a cheesy 90s aesthetic, and our nostalgia for all of those things. Let us know down below which movies you're planning to watch and which ones took you right back to the good old days. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.